In order to import data into MATLAB, the first thing we need to do is get to the directory where the file is stored. I stored my Excel file under my downloads directory. There's different ways to get to it. You can manipulate the files with the arrows or just go ahead and click this button, which lets you browse for a folder. I'm going to go ahead and click downloads, select folder, and then right there is the file that I've saved. I'm gonna show you two different ways of importing the data. One way is through the graphical user interface, or GUI. In this case, we just click on the Import Data button. The Import Data button is under the Home tab. Go to the correct folder, go ahead and click on the file, and open it. It might take a while to open. You'll see the file, click on Import Selection. Once it's done importing, you can go ahead and X out that window, and you can see here we have a table named Amazon IBM. If I double click on that, the table contents open. The import data tool opened this up as a table. We haven't dealt with tables yet. We've only dealt with arrays. Arrays are data structures where all the columns and rows are of the same type. A table can have columns of different types. Column one in this case is a date column, and then the second two columns are numerical. Instead of opening this up as a table, let's go ahead and again select import data and the file I want to select, and let's zoom in on this. Let's make this larger, and we're going to select the output type. Instead of a table, we're going to choose column vectors. What that's going to do is save three separate variables, one named date, which is a form date time, one variable named AMZN, which will be a numerical array, and IBM, which will also be a numerical array. Click on import selection, it tells us which variables were imported, and again, go ahead and close this out. So I now have three separate variables. If I click on date, I'll see a list of date times. If I click on Amazon, I'll see the closing prices of Amazon on those dates that correspond with the date array. And finally, IBM. The import data button works unless you're going to try to publish the file. In that case, we are going to need to use the command line prompt. Being in the right directory really didn't matter for the import data, but it is going to matter in this case. So what we're going to do is assign it a variable. I'm going to call it Amazon underscore IBM. We're going to say read table, and then we're going to use the name of the file in single quotes. And go ahead and hit enter, but first we're going to use a semicolon because I don't want to see all that data on the screen. I do see that it's loaded into a table, and if I double click on it, I see the table. When we use the import command, we could separate this out with one click, but now unfortunately we're going to have to manually pull those columns apart. First, let's deal with column number one. That was the date column. We're going to say date equals, and then the name of the variable, parentheses, now for accessing the entire row, we're going to use the colon. The colon tells us to do all the rows. Then we're going to put a comma and then a one, and then an end parentheses, and again a semicolon to suppress the output. So parentheses, colon, comma, one, and parentheses tells us to give all the rows for the first column. However, we notice on the left-hand side, it says that the date is still a table. We don't want it to be a table, we want it to be a column vector. So instead of parentheses, we're going to use curly braces. This is because Amazon underscore IBM is not a matrix like we talked about before, but this is a table. When you want to pull out data from a table and want it to be stored in a matrix or vector format, you need to use curly parentheses. Now I see that the date variable is a column vector in form date time. I'm going to do the same thing for Amazon and IBM. Looking at the table, I can see the second column is the Amazon data, and the third column is IBM. So the only thing that changes for each of these commands is the second number that tells us we want to pull out columns one, two, and then three, and store those into date, Amazon, and IBM respectively. Now you don't need to do this, but I'm going to show you how to plot some of this. Let's go ahead and say plot. I want my x-axis to be date. I want my y-axis to be, I'll start off with IBM. What I'm going to do is I want to plot two plots on top of each other. So I'm going to use the command hold on. 
Then I'm going to say plot date and then Amazon, A-M-Z-N. And when I go back to my plot window, I'll see the difference between what Amazon stock prices did from 2009 to 2019 and what the IBM prices did. I'm going to go ahead and put a legend and I can even label the X and Y axes. And when I do that, I have a very nice graph. Now we know how to import data. Now we need to export data. So what I'm going to do now is create another variable named difference that subtracts the Amazon price minus the IBM price. I made sure that my Amazon and IBM are both double vectors, that they're not tables. And again, I did that by using the curly braces instead of parentheses. And I'm going to say diff equals Amazon minus IBM. If I go ahead and click on diff, I see that for the first couple of years, Amazon stock was lower than IBM. But as I scroll down, I see as time goes by, Amazon price surpasses IBM's. All right, so now I want to save to a data file so I can read into Excel later a combination of both that date time column as well as that difference column. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable and I'm going to name it date diff and I'm going to have that equal and I'm going to use brackets because I'm going to be building an array and I first want to include date then a comma and then I want to add to that diff but the problem is date and diff are both two different types of variables. One is a date time and one is a double. So that means we're going to have to resort to using a table, which is how we pulled the data in. in the so to do that, I'm going to still use the variable date diff, and I'm going to have it equal table parentheses and the date array and the diff array. That time it works, I'm going to go ahead and double click on date diff and it looks like what I'm expecting. So now the rest is easy. Now I'm simply going to write table, parentheses, the name of the table, which in this case is date diff, and I'm going to give it a file name. I'm going to use single quotes around that file name, and I'm going to call it diff underscore Amazon underscore IBM dot CSV. Now if I see up in my current folder, I should see another file. And if I wanted to import it, I could. But what I'm going to do instead is go to Excel, and I'm going to see if I can open it up. And sure enough, I can. It's even the correct date format, and then I have the difference right there. So we have learned how to import data and export data in MATLAB, and we've learned a little bit about tables and how to extract complete columns from tables.